One man, one mission. To rid the world of chronic anxiety once and for all. The Anxiety Guy, Dennis Simsek, shares his personal transformation from living a life filled with overwhelming worry to becoming a full-fledged positivity machine. A leading authority in generalized anxiety, Dennis gets to the truth of your mental health challenges and sets you on a path to transforming each and every area of your life. Here he is, the one and only, The Anxiety Guy. Hello and welcome to episode 304. You're listening to The Anxiety Guy podcast. I'm Dennis Simsek and thanks for joining me today. Today, I've got a very insightful podcast episode for you. And before I get into it, know that the Health Anxiety Program is now available at theanxietyguy.com under Health Anxiety. 12 weeks to your freedom from health anxiety at theanxietyguy.com. And my friends, I always ask myself this question, why? Why are people listening to this podcast? Where? Where are people right now? in their healing journey. What? What do they need more than anything from me? And the more questions I ask myself, the more I'm directed towards very important skill sets that need to be developed in order for us to meet with our desires, our desires of inner peace that lead to happiness and joy. And today's podcast episode is about getting back in touch with your body. This is a very, very important podcast episode, and I want you to really dial in today. Dial in. Really understand what it is I'm about to talk about because it's going to make such a big difference in your life as it has in mine. Because back in the day, when I was suffering from an anxiety disorder, the darkest of darkest days. I remember always playing a tug of war with my thoughts. I was always trying to be positive and optimistic and grateful, but it seemed like there was a part of me that was so powerful, almost like it didn't want me to experience those good feelings. And it always kept me from tapping into that feeling and driving that positive momentum that I needed to heal my anxiety. The biggest missing component in anxiety healing is the rebuilding of our relationships with our bodies. Hence, why I promote my mapping meditation on YouTube so much, because it's a gateway to self-love. It's a gateway to self-compassion. It's a gateway to higher thinking. When we can get to a place where the relationship with our bodies are improving, guess what's going to happen? The mind is going to follow. Because the mind-body feedback loop is what the body does, the mind does, and what the mind does, the body does. However, It's much easier to change the body to change the mind than the other way around. I know what it's like to grapple with your thoughts. I know what it's like to fight, to fight and to strive with your thinking, not getting the right amount of sleep, not being able to think clearly, not having a moment of relaxation. I know what that's like. And I need you to understand this mind-body feedback loop very, very well. Because when you do, you're going to start focusing more on your body than you do your mind. In turn, the shift will happen. And this is what I do with so many of my clients who are going through my programs right now. I make sure that I pull their attentions back to their physiology rather than allow them to continue to grapple with their thinking. This is something that I really want to touch on, this idea of oxytocin. Oxytocin is the neurotransmitter within the body that accelerates neuroplasticity. Many of you know that term. 
Neuroplasticity is the process of rewiring the brain, something we all want, therefore shifting our perceptions and feelings. The more oxytocin running through your body, the faster you're going to change. And oxytocin is enhanced through a physiological state change. Laughter, hugging, smiling, dark chocolate, orgasms, and anything else that is fun to you. Now, with the idea of oxytocin saturation, we have to understand how to control our own states. How to control and guide this body so that we can naturally experience the changes we want in our minds. I want you to get familiarized with this concept, this idea of state control. In fact, I want you to write it down. State control. This is the process of controlling your own physiological state, therefore controlling, or rather, guiding your emotional state. Okay, so when we control our physiological state, it will have a dramatic impact on guiding our emotional states. Notice how different this approach is compared to what you have been doing. State control can be utilized through two ways. Willpower or through your own physiology, through your own body. Now, which one do most people emphasize each and every day? Willpower. They try to will themselves through their fears. They try to will themselves through the emotional states that they don't want to feel anymore. They will themselves through uncomfortable situations. And the more you will yourself, the faster you're going to drain yourself. The faster your batteries are going to be depleted. So is willpower the way? No. A physiological or bodily change is the way especially when you're going to encounter a situation that is unfamiliar and therefore you know that it's new to you and something that you have to do to once and for all eliminate your fears. Willpower is this act of willfully and cognitively forcing yourself to do something. But physiological state control is to shift the two most important aspects, write this down, the two most important aspects within you, which are breathing and posture. Breathing and posture. We're going to do a little exercise in a second, but I want you to understand the power behind your breathing and your posture, and I want you to spend time with this. Give it your focus, give it your energy for the next few weeks. Because each and every physiological shift has a corresponding emotional state. And every emotional state has a corresponding physiology. Let's test this right here, right now. Are you with me? Okay, let's do it. I want you right now to look and breathe like a depressed person. Go ahead, go there. I want you to look and breathe like a depressed person. I want you to take on the posture of someone that's depressed and breathe like you are depressed. Notice how it feels. That's right, it's okay to go there. Now I want you to look and breathe like an empowered person. That's right, assume the posture that says, I am empowered. That's right. Breathe like someone that's empowered. Notice what that feels like. And finally, I want you to look and breathe like a person who's just healed their anxiety. Oh my goodness, there it is. Assume the posture right now. Nail it down in your physiology. Allow the inner child to see and notice what you're doing. Look like you have just healed your anxiety. You have done it. You've done it. You're so proud of yourself. Breathe that accomplished feeling in right now. Notice what this person looks like and breathes like 
when they have healed their anxiety for good. <sighs> My friend, you have just tapped in to everything that you wanted. Now, here's our goal. Okay, here's our goal. And if you're stuck in, well, I don't know what the posture is like for, you know, this emotional state, then, you know what, you're just over-questioning yourself because you already know what it's like. You've been here a million times before. You've experienced happy feelings. You've experienced inner peaceful feelings. You've experienced empowered feelings. And with that feeling comes a way that you look and breathe. It's already in you, so don't question it. Here's our goal today for this podcast. Your job today is to find the emotional states that you want to live in most often, okay, inner peace, happiness, and so on, and begin practicing the corresponding physiology for these states. So the posture and the breathing patterns for those emotional states. In fact, you want to write down your most desired emotional states, and then what I want you to do is I want you to practice going into them. And if you go into them for a two-minute period, everything changes. Literally, everything changes. Because when I mean everything, your perceptual filters begin shifting. If there's 10 pieces of information in the environment that says, hey, this is a positive place, and there's 10 pieces of information that says this is a negative place, which one do you think you're going to focus on when you look and breathe like you've just healed your anxiety? You will begin perceiving in the good, and you will begin filtering out the bad. This negativity bias lives within so many people, and we're going to turn it into a positivity bias through your body, through state control. Not willfully, but physiologically. So let me repeat this again. Your job today is to find the emotional states that you want to live in most often and begin practicing the corresponding way of breathing and looking for those states. My friends, physiology is crucial. Don't allow a negative story to affect you physiologically because you're going to go down that negative rabbit hole. Instead, assume the posture and breathing pattern that says, I can filter out the bad and focus on the good. I can be optimistic. And this is at a subconscious level, as much as it is at a conscious level. I love you all from the bottom of my heart. Remember that you are more than anxiety. Take this podcast episode and run with it, because each and every week our goal is progress. Our goal is momentum. I love you all. And if you have any other questions on the Health Anxiety Program, head over to TheAnxietyGuy.com today. Bye-bye. Thanks for being an important part of the Anxiety Guy podcast community. If you enjoyed this podcast, please leave a positive rate and review. If you're searching for further support on your road to recovery from anxiety, head over to anxietyexit.com and take part in the powerful End the Anxiety program based around the CBT model. If you're searching for a more one-on-one -on -one approach, you can sign up now for personal coaching sessions with Dennis via Skype. Remember, you are more than anxiety. See you in the next episode.